Hey guys, this is Nachiket Murthy from Manifold AI Learning. I help learners in transitioning to AI and MLOps role through the structured learning path at Manifold AI Learning. Recently, I've been interviewed at a product company for the role of a senior architect. Now, this video, I'm going to help you understand how do you tackle the questions and what kind of questions that you can expect when you are attending the interviews with your experience of eight plus years. So this video is dedicated for the folks who are looking to transition to AI ML roles at the senior level. Now I have actually written down the points as what I'll be conveying so, so that I can cover all the points and explain in detail about my experience at the interview. All right, guys, so let's start with job description. So the job description was all about I'll be a senior architect and they are looking for a senior architect role who not only knows how to work with a client but also has a hands-on experience because they have their own in-house generative AI agentic product and my responsibility will be about ensuring that whatever the solutions that they have got should be implemented for the customers and it should be able to satisfy the customer requirement. I'll be a bridge between the implementation team and the customer and more importantly, wherever the team is stuck, my responsibility to ensure that release those blocks and help them towards building the right solution and at the end, provide the approval based on the quality of work so that it can be implemented to the customer. So this is the senior architect role that I was interviewed for. Next, coming to the interview process. So, depending on the experience level the interview process is gonna change now given my background from consulting and given my background about the companies that i had worked with and the experience that i had my interview process was just two rounds okay the first round was the direct personal interview with a director now the question that i had is typical to what an architect will be performing i'll share some of the important questions that I had and how I had approached those questions and that should give you a fair amount of idea as how you can prepare yourself for the interview. So the first round, it's basically, it's a personal interview discussion with the director. So the questions was all about what kind of solutions that I had implemented for the clients that I had worked with. So more importantly, they were specifically looking into the generative AI based solution using the various platforms. So I have explained about the recent implementations that was done and more importantly, the they were also more interested about the kind of customers that I had dealt with and they were specific about how did you manage their data because as an architect, you'll be working with the customers of various domains. And the way that you treat with one domain is different than the one that you would treat with a different domain. To give you an example, when you're working with the banking systems or the insurance, in most of the cases, they'll be using an old system, could be a mainframe or similar system, because when something is working, they are hesitant towards change. And the other thing is, there's a huge compliance that comes into play when you're dealing with the banking and insurance sectors. If you look into the marketing domain, it's a little flexible, I would say. They are more agile. They want to get more uh, ROAS. Like let's say if they are an ad company, they want to ensure that they get more revenue out of the ad spend. So similarly, like in, in such scenarios, uh, they are more having uh, uh, latest technologies. So when you're dealing with the marketing data or marketing companies, the way that you handle their data and the way that you implement the solution is very different compared to the domains such as the banking and insurance. So they were specific about the domain-based experience, what kind of domains that I had worked with and what compliance related and security related aspects that I'm actually familiar with. Okay, so that's that was, I would say, first 15 minutes was all about the domain specific knowledge and the domain specific security and the compliance matters. And then the next 30 minutes was all about the scenario based. I'll give you a wonderful scenario. I mean, I really like the way and the interaction that I had with the director. 
and I'm going to tell you this one scenario that I was asked was you are now working as an architect right now in my company now as an architect a customer approaches us now the customer doesn't care as what model that you would be using and you are required to create a chatbot for them now in such scenario how do you decide which model to use now my response was in this manner so i've clearly mentioned that as an architect my goal is to ensure that for the customer for whom i'm implementing the solution first it should be cost efficient so to ensure that will be providing a cost efficient and also in alignment with their requirement the first and foremost that i'm going to ask is what kind of data that you will be dealing with then how many number of users that you would expect to use this because that's going to help me to decide as what deployment process that i can apply over there and next what kind of response that you are expecting so first question is the what kind of input that would help me to decide as whether i require a text based model or whether i require a multimodal next the type of output will also help me to determine as what should be the output length because if you remember and or if you have worked in this generative ai based solution so the costing of this generative ai model is dependent on the input length and the response length and also the type of model so by getting these information will be able to get a clear information as what kind of uh, data that we'll be dealing with and more importantly which model to choose then once this is done we'll also talk about if they want to use their existing data for the context then i'll also check about what kind of data it is if you are looking at the rag architecture then along with that okay the other aspects that i also look at is once this is done the next step is about how do i build the solution so in order to build the solution there are two ways obviously i can make use of the model that's available in the hugging face get that model and deploy it on the own on prem server so or the other approach is i can make use of the platform such as amazon bedrock and go ahead and implement the solution over there so this decision is dependent on how comfortable the company is when it comes to usage of such platform so when we look into that usage of platform it's much easier as a vendor to implement it but the companies or the clients they have their own specific requirement they are uh, hesitant in most of the companies we have observed that they are actually hesitant towards usage of the platform they want to deploy on their own server now one approach that i had uh, come up as since there was a requirement to deploy it on their on prem server a simple way to do it is so build the model using the hugging face maybe we'll apply the quantization to reduce the to reduce the model size and then once we reduce the model size we can deploy it on the kubernetes cluster with the hpa scaler in the kubernetes uh, and along with that we'll also set a criteria over there that says that it would make use of a gpu based instance such that it can run on the nodes which are gpu powered okay that's one way of deployment and the other question follow up question that i had was how do you test such scenario or how do you validate whether the solution that you have implemented whether it's in line with their requirement what are the checks that you would be doing to ensure that you do this check before you hand over to the customer so my response was first i'll check the latency how much time it's taking to generate the response and the other thing is i'll also look into the costing as well so like for example if i'm using a platform i'll be using i'll be looking at the costing and here in this case i'll be looking at whether the compute system that i have used whether it's helping me to uh, generate the response in a better latency or not okay so there was also a question about how do you choose the compute i couldn't answer it perfectly but i remember that i have read somewhere that uh, we can actually get to know about the number of computes that we require depending on the number of parameters so i was just able to provide this uh, vague information about it and i haven't had a chance to look into it maybe after this video i'll go ahead and 
check out more as well but let me know your thoughts if you are aware about how do you choose the compute okay and then the other aspects that we'll be looking at when it comes to testing is we'll ensure that we build the guardrail to ensure that the sensitive information are filtered out and even we'll also choose about the domain of the answers that we want to answer we don't want to build a chatbot which will be used for general purpose we want the chatbot that we are building it should be for the specific use case purpose okay so uh, like this was about the overall discussion that i had and then uh like when i was actually conveying so first thing before i answered all this i also made some assumptions like the since they had provided that they want to use the on-prem so i made an assumption that since it's not given to ensure that i'm able to present this case study so I, my assumption was will assume that we are working only with the text data and the output will be a text data so based on this so i have provided the answer so this was about my overall experience in that particular round and the next round is all about the coding interview where i was asked to go uh, to that office and uh, then go ahead and perform the coding round over there so that round is yet to happen but i hope you got an idea as what kind of questions that you can expect when you're looking at the leadership role so this one case study so similar to that uh, we had two case studies like two other case studies one was related to the machine learning the other one was specific to the healthcare. so it was a wonderful discussion i would say overall and it took around uh, 60 to 90 minutes uh, around uh, around this time the conversation went on okay so the key takeaway for you and if you're someone who is preparing for a leadership role or more importantly uh, use your experience and then use that experience as a, a baseline and then transition to the leadership role into this AIML or ML ops so my recommendation is this don't Think like a worker, think like a builder. Okay, when I say builder, have a full stack knowledge about what exactly the entire solution would look like. When you look at, at this lens, so these rounds, these interview rounds will look like a conversation. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation when I had with the director. And when you are in this mindset of being a builder, so you're gonna enjoy this and more importantly you'll also be excited to work over there because whatever the tools that we'll be using whether it is mlflow tensorflow hugging face or libraries the aws gcp azure so it's all just the tool guys so at the end of the day we are building the solution so if you just remember this and focus on how these tools would play around when it comes to building a solution it's much more fun to work at and if you're someone who is new to AIML, new to MLOps and wants to proceed ahead in the learning journey, yes, feel free to join our community. We have, uh, we actually can conduct uh, every week workshops. You can join our free workshop. I'm excited to help you to get started in this role of MLOps and AIML. I look forward to helping you guys and subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And all the best. Take care.